morning from the St Paul's Bay area of Malta. I am staying in a hotel just across the road and I just came down here, it's been raining overnight to catch a glimpse of the fishing boats early in the morning before they head out to sea to catch their, their day's catch. Today I'm going to be jumping in the car very shortly and heading off to Fort Campbell, an old military fortress built by the British and used by the British during the Second World War and then heading to have a look at some of the watchtowers that dot the coastline of Malta and then ending up somewhere in the Malia Bay area which is a very touristy part of the island. So I am going to head back to the car and get on the road. There's the rental car doing all the hard work on this trip. It is a Kia Picanto. Small engine, lightweight. It's doing a good job so far. I think the cost of the rental is about 150 euros for uh, Monday night to Saturday night. So pretty good. This is Selman Palace. This was built by the Order of St. John in the 18th century. First records of it on a map are from 1783 and it was used as a summer residence and also later a meet-up point for hunting. So as you've seen, I've just reached the end of the very narrow, twisty and turny gravel road that has brought me up to Fort Campbell. Basically an abandoned British military base that was built just before the beginning of the Second World War. The British who ruled the islands back then were concerned about an attack coming from Sicily, which is only about 50 miles, 80 kilometers across the Mediterranean Sea. The area that it's built in is kind of designed to protect the area from St. Paul's Bay right the way around to Malia Bay and it gives incredible views over the ocean so they could see an amphibious assault and an aerial assault and so the British built it using what looks like limestone to blend in with the landscape here in Malta to make it camouflage so that people and soldiers and armies attacking couldn't see it very well. These days it is essentially, I was going to say a tourist attraction, it's not really, it's just sitting here in the abandoned state that it was presumably left in. Unbelievably enough, you can just wander around. Some graffiti artists have already been here sadly and defaced some of the building and brickwork. But, incredibly enough, as I say, you can just walk right the way through a whole load of these buildings. So that's what I'm going to do. And do a little bit of exploring while I'm here. As you can see, it's fairly overgrown now. Some areas aren't accessible anymore because they are basically falling down and in such a bad state of repair. You can see the ironwork in the concrete roof of this particular building. And I'll show you something just in the next room. I'm not going to go in, but look at those two columns built out of blocks chocked with wood right at the top, essentially holding up that roof. It is sagging here where there is no column. My goodness, it looks like it is ready to collapse. And it's a real shame. Hopefully, the government of Malta sees this as the historical remnant of the past that it is, restore it into some kind of tourist attraction. That would be good. So presumably this is where the machine gunners would have been stationed with a, a view out here looking down towards the sea. See the fortress wall actually runs just around here 
So from here you can kind of see nicely over the fortress wall and there's St Paul's Island over there. I'm going to head down there very shortly, take a closer look at that. So I've just spotted a little ladder that lets you, if I can just get through, oh dear, get through this undergrowth here. Oh, this ladder here has, uh, oh, let's see if I can just climb it a little bit. Okay, we're on the roof. I'm not gonna walk too far on the roof because it doesn't look all that safe, but it does give you a great vantage point up here of the fortress itself. I reckon I'm probably in the center of it. And this roof here definitely doesn't look all that good. Looks entirely collapsed. The amount of air raids that took place during World War II bombing thousands of times the Maltese Islands. It was fortresses like this that helped to protect the area and stop attempts at invasions. I've just spotted another building here that has definitely stood the test of time. I'm not sure what all of these things are. There is a boarded up, looks like hole in there. Now the reason some of these roofs have collapsed is because people over the years have come here to steal the iron girders that reinforced the roofs. You can see in here the iron girders are still here but in lots of the other ones they've been taken out, stolen and the roofs have in the end collapsed. That might be what happened here actually. This roof has collapsed. Well, even a fortress needs a way of getting in and out for authorized personnel. And I'm pretty sure this would have been the main entrance or exit into and out of the fortress. So some kind of security office here, I would imagine. Let's go and have a quick look at the state inside here. Roof looks all right in this one lots of rubble. It would be incredible for British soldiers who served here to come back and just see what it's become. Fort Campbell is behind me and St Paul's Island is now out to my left. Now the story goes that the Bible documented in the year 60 St Paul getting shipwrecked on an island on his way to Rome and it is believed that that island was Malta and more specifically St Paul's Island as it is referred to now behind me that's where the shipwreck is supposedly taken place. Now when the tide is low there is a narrow isthmus that connects basically the two pieces of land you can see out there and it is one island St Paul's but when the tide is high the isthmus disappears and there are actually two islands. The one behind this main island called St Paul's with the statue on is then called Quartz Island. My advice would be to spend the day here at Fort Campbell. You can get a car pretty close and there is a lot of hiking and walking around this area. Lots of things to see including the fortress itself, the limestone flats, the salt flats, you've got St Paul's Island, you've got the Mistra Battery and Mistra Bay and you've also got a number of towers that were built during the reign of the Order of St John. So there is an incredible amount of stuff to do bring a picnic but definitely bring a load of drinks as well because it is 
exceptionally hot and it is not even peak season. destination for today the red tower perched right high on the top of a hill a great defensive location both in terms of defending the country and keeping an eye out for what's going on around the entire bay it was built in the 17th century and is famous due mainly to its red color it is the only, I believe, red watchtower painted that colour on the island. But it does come with a really good defensive mechanism, including a drawbridge, including water storage, and the capacity inside to withstand a siege of 40 days. So I'm going to take a walk over there now. It's two euros fifty to get inside and get to the top, so that's what I'm going to do. Can the tower always be wet? Oh, yes. Okay, I've just climbed the steps and I'm about to head onto the roof. It's pretty windy out here, I think. Yes, indeed. But what an incredible view. Malia Bay down there. Over here, you can make out Camino. That's where I'm heading to in a few days time. Gozo over there as well. That's where I'm going to as well. And all kinds of views. Still got the cannons up here the rural landscape there. What an incredible way to finish the video, I think. There's a cannon looking out towards the bay and the beaches and that sea, look at the colors. Incredible, right, well, thank you very much for watching the video again. I'm gonna end it here and uh, loads more to come from Malta going to be looking at the Popeye village Gozo Camino Valletta lots still to come thanks for watching see you in the next video so fine.